Live streaming is on. Yeah. Okay. So um, the first uh, speaker of the day is uh, Brian Johnston from the Ordnance Survey. And Brian is a technical consultant uh, for the Ordnance Survey. And he'll speak on accessing OpenStreetMap downloads uh, with uh, API with R. That's okay. Oh, just oh, there we go. Cool. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm going to be talking about the OS downloads API and how you access that to download OS open data products using R. Um, I also give this talk kind of a, a a bit of a subtitle of probably the least technical R talk that you're ever going to hear. But also, I think that that's a good thing because it just shows how accessible some of this stuff is in kind of getting it into your uh, workflows. So what is the Downloads API? So Downloads API is an API that Ordnance Survey has created to allow people to come into our databases and pull the products that they need as part of their workflow. They can use that URL to download the, the specific product that they've selected and bring it in. Uh, essentially, the main use case for this is just to simplify workflows. If you can bring use the API in that way, you can automate that download process and, and kind of simplify how you're undertaking your tasks. So as I said, the range of different benefits for this uh, as I said, you can automate so you don't have to go on every month, find your data and bring it in individually. You can also schedule it. The number of customers we have who come to us and say that, oh, we missed that download because in, in our kind of backlog of uh, records, how do we get a previous epoch of the data? So if you've got it scheduled, you can bring the data in when you need it. You can also ensure that your local data holdings have the most up-to-date version of the data held locally. And also it reduces and limits uh, opportunities for kind of human error in your process. Once you've got it automated, you can bring it in without somebody misclicking a button at that, that inconvenient time during a download. It's time saving. You can set it up to run when everyone's asleep. So that you're not uh, taking time out of your regular operating system. And also you can fully integrate with your onward steps. So downloading it can be automated and then loading it into your own locally held databases can kind of be made part of the same workflow. So this is the downloads API in terms of accessing uh, uh, open data and the kind of the operations that exist there. And as I said, it's not a very technical thing. It is a very simple and straightforward process. We have a series of uh, operations just to look at the products that are available and then also to extend that to get in and look at to obtain your download links for those products. So in this little use case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to download OS built up areas. So this is our newest open data product. Uh, it was released just before Christmas last year. And it's a data set that essentially shows the boundaries of a settlement built up based upon the built upness of an area. So it's different from National Records of Scotland's settlement boundaries in that it's not based on population. It's built up based on the actual structures that are present. Uh, in addition, it has two uh, components that uh, are added to it. Built up extents, which are a bit tricky sometimes to explain, but they're the built up areas within a built up area, because we've also got the non built up extents, which would represent green spaces or empty areas within those built up areas. An excellent example is just behind us uh, in Kelvin Grove Park, would be a, a non built up area extent within a built up area. So that's how this data is structured. It's also based on grids, uh, a gridded structure, kind of making it a lot more friendly for kind of data analytics use. So the first step to using the downloads API to, uh, to bring that data and download it to your local holdings is you've got to go get an API key. Uh, 
all of our API keys can be obtained from the OS Data Hub, and you can register as uh, an open data user there. Once you're there, it's actually exceptionally straightforward, but there's a tab that says API Dashboard. You go in and you click Add API, and once you've done that, you can generate a Downloads API instance with the key present and visible for you. Obviously, we suggest you don't share your Downloads API key, otherwise everybody else is going to be take it, feeding on, you, on your one key. But it's a, if you ever have an issue with your API key being compromised, you can regenerate that really in a really straightforward way using the system. So as I said, this is probably the where this starts to get the little teeny bit of technical, which is uh, actually how we're going to do this in R. The reason I've chosen to do this in R in this instance is because we did get a customer request of how do we do this, particularly from the healthcare sector, where folks in that setting are much more familiar with R than any other software package. So we had to try and tackle this problem. Firstly, we call a couple of libraries in there to let us look at the data that we're pulling in from that from the API, and then we pass the URL, uh, kind of the get command for the URL built from uh, our API key, key. From that, then we can do the products call to look at all the products that are available as open data. And what we get then is a return of the list of products getting all eight, 18, there is a, hide that. There are 18, vector map district is present as well. So we get the 18 open data products that are released from Ordnance Survey there. We can then use that view to obtain the ID, which is what we're gonna to use to call the open data product eventually. So yeah, as highlighted, those are the IDs and there is the built up areas. So to call, the built up areas, I need to know built up areas, capitalized letters on the first uh, of each of the words, all one word. From there, I can essentially build my URL to uh, link to that product download uh, using that built update. Uh, I can then take some time and look at the different uh, names that are present within that URL as kind of extensions from it. And know that the two that I'm interested in is the URL, as that's the downloads URL, and the file name to just simplify the process of, of, of downloading to my work directory. Just a, a quick loop to summon the download. And I can pull both the files that I need down to my uh, local my local drive. As I said, that's it. That's anything technical done. As I said, it, it is very straightforward to pull this data down to your local set, uh, settings. From there, I can just drag and drop those files straight into Q. Or if I wanted to, I could use R to unzip those files and start doing my analysis in R. Or I can automate the process to send it to my PostGIS database. You know, whatever my choices are, I can do it from that point, but once I've got the data locally stored. So we have built a whole range of different instruction sets. So this was the R one, but we've built it for everything from looking from FME and Power Automate to Bash scripts and Python. And usually we can figure things out how, how, how to make it work. So if you've got any, uh, weird or unusual softwares, feel free to reach out to us and we'll uh, try and offer advice where we can. And these here are the, the links to those technical specifications for how to access this going forward. And that's kind of my run through accessing an R. That's me. 